Welcome to Navajo County Connection. I'm your host, Daryl Seymour, Supervisor for District 4. Today our guest is Katrina Jenkins, the Navajo County Emergency Manager, and Chief Jim Morgan from Pine Top Fire Department. Welcome to the show today. Thank Good you. Good morning. Glad to have each of you here today. And uh, you, you got a fiery day already started. Yes, sir. We are, uh, uh, the, the deserts are uh, uh, drying up or have been dry and uh, we've got the Sawtooth Fire outside of uh, Superior and Apache Junction and uh, sending resources their way to provide some assistance. Well, we appreciate that you're helping out and, you know, because we do that because we know that we've received a lot of help in the past and, you know, it's so it's great to, to have the last couple of days we've had a little bit of moisture and we just hope that that continues. We've been blessed that way to, to have that. But we really want to talk about Firewise today and some of the things that we have. I know we recently did a show with you with the city here, uh, Katrina, it was great. And the insight that we get from that to maybe if we can make one little difference or one little spark that changed, it could also save our communities, it could save lives, it could save property damage. And so uh, as the season turns, as the winds pick up and these high temperatures, so does uh, the dryness and, and the sensitivity. What are some of the concerns that you have as far as, let's kind of explain your position with the county, Katrina, and, okay. and what it is that you do to help uh, teach and also with Chief here, what we try to get information out to help people. Sure, so I'm the emergency manager, like you said, um, and I'm fortunate enough to get to work with all the partners like Chief Morgan, um, all of our law enforcement partners, and really just spread the message of preparedness, um, which in this case, this time of year, is, is making sure your home is prepared for fire season, um, because we do live in the wildland urban interface, or what we call the WUI, and so fire is always a threat, year round. But as you said, it's drying out, so it's even more of a threat right now. So we wanna make sure homes and families are prepared so that our community can c continue to stay safe. So that's my big message right now, is just the preparedness. And we teach preparedness year round, so it's <laughs> ready, set, go, right? right? right. <laughs> Chief, what are some of the things that people can do to be prepared, maybe around their home or around the, the yard uh, that just can make a difference in a fire? Um, Mayor, before I get there, uh, one thing that I want to chat about is our Community Wildfire Protection Plan. And I think okay. often that plan gets missed. Uh, and that is the foundation for all of our communities here in the White Mountains. It, it talks about exactly what is our risk. And, and you've been a longtime resident here. You're familiar with uh, our, our history with wildfire. And as Katrina mentioned, uh, we live in a WUI. More importantly, we live in what's called a WUI intermix. And that means uh, while we have forest public lands around us, all of our properties are little micro forests. So we have these small forests that exist uh, and a home sitting right in the middle of that. So uh, we are teaching folks here not only about that risk, but how they can reduce that risk substantially. Uh, to the extent where the home can survive a wildland fire on its own. And we do that through vegetative management. Ve vegetative management means clearing the understory, thinning some of the pine trees on the property in what we call firewise zones. Uh, the immediate zone is that first five feet, and that's the most critical zone of any structure. It prevents ground cover fire. Uh, eliminates the potential for ember cast, the big embers that get thrown ahead of the fire from sitting on combustibles that uh, meet the vertical surfaces of the structure uh, and then cause those uh, unfortunate what we call structure to structure ignitions. So these are those spot fires that are well ahead of the head of the fire um, and, and maintaining those zones are critical for that home to survive a wildfire without having a uh, fire unit and personnel uh, on site. Because as you know, uh, experiencing many of the wildfires that we've experienced here in the White Mountains, we don't have enough resources with our local resources. And as you mentioned uh, at the start of the broadcast, uh, we, we provide that support all across the st uh, state, helping our neighbors uh, in times of uh, catastrophic wildfire. So when uh, right now we're experiencing and blessed to have a decent snowpack, some light spring rains and uh, getting into the early monsoons, 
So, so far things, knock on wood, have been really, uh, as you mentioned, blessed for our White Mountain communities. Uh, but we can't get complacent, and these zones are important for us. So I, I just mentioned that immediate zone. There's actually four zones that we look at uh, to help protect properties. Well, why don't we just keep talking about those zones since we're on that subject? Is that okay? Certainly. You know, let's just, uh, because it definitely is, you know, so everybody can defend those first five feet. And that's getting out, raking your leaves, cleaning your gutters, checking those things, and amazing, putting fresh paint on, you know, so those boards that are dried out, all of those things to make their home a little bit more, uh, well, it's also more appealing to the neighborhood. And, and you know, doing the things that can, just home management and home maintenance and home upkeep and care. Then what are some of the other zones then? Well, the, the second zone is that zone that's the 30-foot the area, and that's where, again, from a vegetative management, now we start looking at thinning the trees. And, and we're not, uh, there's a misnomer out there that when we talk about thinning trees that we're asking people to clear cut their properties, and that is not the case. Uh, in fact, we, we've been mitigating now uh, with the Pine Top Fire District for about three and a half, going on four years now, um, treated almost 500 acres uh, in our White Mountain communities, all the way from Linden to Pine Top. Uh, and we're thinning trees. On average, pre-settlement, we saw 20 to 30 trees per acre, and now we're seeing two to 300 trees per acre. So we're trying to get it to that pre-settlement look. Uh, without getting too technical, it's about uh, 12 feet of distance between the canopies of the pine trees that sit on, on a piece of property. So we gotta get our trees social distancing, right? Absolutely, that's, <laughs> okay. that's Fire distancing. Yes, sir, yep. <laughs> on that. On that. Okay, Katrina, does the county help or provide, or is there any assistance in, in thinning that you're aware of and things? Yes, yeah, so we, we um, at the County Emergency Management Office, as well as Chief Morgan's Pine Top Fire District, um, have both been lucky enough to be awarded grants under the Wildland Fire Hazardous Fuels Reduction Programs. Um, in fact, the last couple of years, um, we've been able to mitigate a couple of those, uh, a couple hundred acres on the mm -hmm. uh, county side. So, um, all the way from Heber Overgard to the other side. Um, grants are important and we've been able to support each other on those things and I can't, I can't even remember how many we've been able to do just this year. So it, we've done a lot and it does help. And like Chief said, we're not completely taking out all the trees, we're just right. thinning so that we can um, get these properties back and the trees back to where it's supposed to be and not so thick. Well, the tree's healthier, you know, as it thins out, it has more water, it has more, you know, it can become stronger both against uh, infestation from, from the bark beetle that we have a lot of, and also they just uh, thrive and do better. And so when you have a real uh, green tree that's uh, full of, uh, you know, and it also works as a, a little bit of a defense of itself for yeah. fires because it's, it's amazing how nature works that the, the pine cones and the trees and the acorns have to have heat to, to pop open mm -hmm. and cause new, but you know, so fire is natural for the rebirth of some of our forest areas, but yet at the same time, those trees are protected if they are healthy and the things are there. So it's an interesting concept of how forestry and everything works together for the benefit of our communities too. So you mentioned, Mayor, that seasonality is, is significant here in the White Mountains of our, our climate and weather patterns. And we're coming off um, a 10-year drought. And to give you an example of, of this change in 2017, uh, for the first time in many years, we went into full forest closures because we were at, at such horrible forest conditions. And again, when I talk about forest conditions, I'm not just talking about our public lands, but I'm talking about our private properties. Uh, and we saw a real uh, bloom in bark beetle attack. And, and anybody that came up from the valley traversing uh, 260 or 60 could see these pockets of large uh, kills from the bark beetle. Well, that just adds fuel to the fire, no pun intended. 
um, but as you mentioned, by thinning and creating those healthy environments on the small microforests, those trees stand a, stand a better chance at defending themselves and pushing out the bark beetle, the natural defense right. system that primarily the ponderosa pine has. So uh, the last two years, as you identified early in the broadcast, we've been blessed with some decent snowpack. Again, not the time to be complacent. It gives us time to breathe and continue to do this mitigation work and get ahead of our significant potential for catastrophic right. wildfire. Because it will, it's not a matter of when, it's, uh, or if, it's a matter of when that next major catastrophic right. wildfire is how resilient will we be uh, then. And this work is gonna continue. As Katrina mentioned from the, the grant program, uh, we've been fortunate uh, with the Pine Top Fire District to, to go after other grants as well. In fact, we're finishing work right now on a bark beetle grant. Um, it not as lucrative as the hazardous fuels grant where they only re reimburse 90%. Uh, the bark beetle is a 50-50 grant. And I, I, I did a newsletter for the community, as I mentioned uh, to you before we started the broadcast, uh, because of COVID-19, we've had to cancel our annual Community Firewise block party. So I put together a newsletter uh, to the communities and, and to uh, many of our property managers, to the HOAs, just to give them a message about what we're continuing to do. Just because we're having one battle doesn't mean that we can um, forget about the, the common threat that we have here in the White Mountains. So we're continuing to do mitigation work and, and have not stopped that. Uh, right now, we're also um, preparing the agreement for our 2019 Hazardous Fuels Grant, and we'll be starting work hopefully in the next couple weeks on properties that have, have uh, property owners that have signed up for that mitigation work. So between Navajo County and the Pine Top Fire District, we're addressing this wildfire pro problem here in the community. That's great. It's great that we have those grants to be able to assist because it's expensive. It's, it not, uh, yes. it's not just a couple of hundred dollars to clear some, some stuff. You have to get some chippers in there. You have to get some professional people that can cut and clear and, and it is a cost. But it's, it's also property management and being responsible you know, citizens uh, to what we have. When we bought that property, we needed to take care of it and continue to take care of it. It's great. And being a part of that is is being a steward of our forests, you know, because we are so close to our forest and have those micro forests on our properties, um, it's part of our responsibility to be that steward for all of our forests, not just our own little piece of it. Right, right. So what does the Firewise, uh, your newsletter, what did it kind of cover some of the things that, you know, your guidelines you give? It covers the community events that we, um, b between Navajo County Emergency Management and the White Mountain communities, this is all of our partners. And, and while we're talking primarily about Pine Top Fire District, it does include Timber Mesa Fire District, the Heber Overgard Fire District, Taylor Snowflake, uh, the, White, the, the White Mountain Lakes communities as well. Uh, and it addresses uh, annually, we normally kick off the season with the national a wild community to wildfire preparedness day. We weren't able to do that. We identify a project. We bring in volunteers to get that message started in the community. Hey, it's spring. We got to start preparing for our wildfire. We we obviously had to cancel that. And as I mentioned, our annual community firewise block party is kind of our premier premier education uh, component where we're we're bringing in uh, experts from Division of Forestry and Fire Management. Um, the United States Forest Service, Game and Fish, um, Arizona Environmental Quality from a, a smoke control component, and a lot of other experts, uh, University of Arizona Extension Office, um, Arizona Fire Adapted Community. So a lot of players come in and we're just dumping all kinds of wildfire education and prevention messages to the community giving them good information on fire resistive landscapes as an example uh, that work here in the White Mountains and don't add to, to the complication of wildfire. Uh, the appropriate distancing, again, the zones that I talked about, um, ensuring that property owners can ask questions about uh, specific plants and fauna in those um, respective firewise zones. Right. 
So yeah. those, uh, it covers that. Then it covers, uh, as I mentioned, the mitigation work that's been completed thus far, uh, the grants that we've been awarded and future grants that we've written and are uh, waiting for pending award notices. Uh, when I wrote the newsletter, we were um, in the running uh, with 85 applicants across the country for an International Association of Fire Chiefs grant through their Ready, Set, Go program. And they were selecting 10 communities across the country to do targeted risk reduction. Uh, we finally found out, uh, in fact, uh, after this meeting, I'm doing our kickoff meeting, we were awarded. Great. So they are going to be, yeah, they're going to be um, uh, hiring a professional marketing group to help us improve our messaging here in the White Mountains and engaging the community on understanding wildfire risk and what they can do to be a partner in reducing that risk. Because again, as we mentioned, it's not a matter of if, it's when and how resilient are we and what kind of recovery can we uh, expect. Right. And one important piece to this grant is there's actually an evacuation component. Um, as, as you know, that's been a big problem with our wildfires is getting the community out when that happens. So we'll be putting together a significant stakeholder group as we uh, tackle that problem of developing an evacuation plan for the White Mountains. I think when you come to an emergency situation like that, if it escalates to that point, is finding the right information. And Katrina, where would they go to get the information to be able to uh, find out? You know, we understand, you know, Twitter and Facebook has all sorts of information, right. but there is directives that if people will follow from the correct information, it makes life easier. Yeah, and we'll be utilizing our resources to the utmost ability. We have the Ready, Set, um, re I'm sorry, Ready Navajo County Alert System. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has not already signed up, please do so. Um, you can go to navajocountyaz.gov slash ready and read more about our alert system. You can sign up to get emails, text message, uh, phone call, landlines, whatever, however you want to be notified about an emergency in our communities. You tell us and we'll, we'll make it happen. Um, so we have our alert system. We have the 311info.net website, and that's um, both Navajo and Apache counties. We share that website to give information and updates to any of those emergencies that are going on. Um, the social media aspect, like you said, we will be in touch with our uh, broadcast folks, like the radio stations, every, uh, the newspaper online, anything we can use to get the word out, we will get messaging out. We ask our citizens to make sure that they obey all um, law enforcement directives so that if it may not make sense to you, this isn't the way you would normally go in and out, but there's a reason because we're trying to get the fire trucks in. We don't want our citizens fighting with those fire trucks for space. So the law enforcement officers may have them go out a different way than you are normally used to. So we do ask that people make sure to listen to those directions from our, our personnel and there will be volunteers out there so don't just think you know better <laughs> listen to what they're they're telling you so yeah there will be a, a lot point. of ways one of the things that i want to stress you know of being mayor and also both a county supervisor there's a lot of information that comes in and that information changes and sometimes by minutes by yeah. minutes and some of the directives that are given if you're not getting it from the source that has the most directive and most informative information, it can put lives into danger, into jeopardy. So if, because things change so quickly, uh, I can't tell you how often in this last thing that we've been involved with that you would hang up the phone and literally you'd pick up another phone and you'd have different direction and different information. And you have to disseminate that and you have to get it out as quickly as you can to the public. And so when they're tuned in to the best source that's going to help them because our number one thing is safety. We want to make sure that the citizens of our communities, the citizens of our counties are safe. And I think if we ever err, it's going to be erring more towards the safety of human life than it will ever be towards the safety of, of public properties. And so Absolutely. we want people to realize that they are our first concern. Then we're going to be concerned for protecting their, their uh, 
properties, mm -hmm. but it's always going to be about human life first. And, and one so, of the things I would add to that is make sure those sources that you're paying attention to are vetted sources. Mm -hmm. You kind of touched on that already, and a lot of times people want to share assumptions or, or insinuations about what they think is going on, and somebody else will pick that up and take that as a fact mm -hmm. when it's really not. And it's right. oftentimes it's the exact opposite. It's not even true at all. Um, both Chief and I have fought that battle a lot um, with all kinds of incidents from fires to, as you said, COVID. So um, we're definitely um, may not be the first one to get the information out, but the information we do put out is factual and um, we get it out as timely as possible but we want to make sure it's accurate more right, than anything right. so um, we we encourage anybody to follow those vetted sources right. um, the pine top fire district page our page the 311 page so the city pages all of those are going to have the most accurate information right. what are some other things a person can be prepared uh, to do, like uh, what should they have ready to just pick up and, and leave with? I, I always recommend a kit, a minimum of 72 hours worth of food, water, um, medications and supplies for you and your family, that's each person in your family, don't forget the pets, um, to be able to grab that and go. I have mine in the back room right next to the back door so I can. it's in a tote, I just grab it and it goes in the car. Um, checking it every year to make sure those those supplies are still good and they haven't expired, um, replacing anything that happens to be expired, making sure you have a can opener, <laughs> a <laughs> manual one. Um, you know, some of those basic needs um, are always a good idea. And then having a plan, a communications plan for your family, so in case you do get separated, you have a way that you'll be able to get in touch with each other. That's very so, helpful. Very yeah. Chief, so what else do we have, uh, different zones or different ready, set, go programs? I know uh, there's so much to, to have your home protected. There are things that we look at. Uh, if somebody was, say they were looking at, maybe they needed a new roof or they were making changes or something like that. Are there things that are better uh, sources to use? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the things that we were fortunate, uh, another grant that our community was awarded was uh, community planning for wildfire assistance. And in that grant, it was technical assistance. They came in and they evaluated uh, one uh, uh, at a landscape level. They did an entire risk assessment for wildfire for Navajo County. Uh, shouldn't be a surprise to, to you or anyone here in the broadcast that Southern Navajo County, uh, predominantly our Ponderosa Pine Forest, was the high to extreme risk. Uh, and one thing that they mentioned there that the vegetative management, the thinning, the clearing of the understory alone is not enough. So what they were recommending is that we start considering uh, adding what's called a WUI code that as we do new development, that we encourage the builders and the developers and the individual property owners to use fire resistive material, including class A roofing. So class A roofing can be either a, an asphalt uh, shingle or a metal roof system, uh, dual pane windows uh, with a fiber screen uh, or metal screen, not a fiber screen. Uh, one eighth inch uh, screening at all of your venting. So if, whether it's an eave vent or a gable vent or a crawl space vent, all of those vents need to have a one eighth inch minimum grid screening. If you've got decks using some sort of screening material or if possible, completely enclosing that deck so it's not exposed to the leaf litter and needle cast that accumulates uh, every spring and winter. Uh, using fire resistive material for the siding and or the deck material as well. So there's cementus type uh, siding. Uh, or if you're going to use a combustible siding, and you mentioned this earlier, that you're ensuring that you're maintaining that every year, at least getting an evaluation of the maintenance of that material. Because as it gets weathered, it reduces the ignition temperature of that combustible. So those are a few things that uh, were recommendations by that technical uh, review committee 
uh, for consideration for property owners. That's great because you know we look at those decks and we go, well, gee, how do those leaves get underneath there? Yeah. And, and as they go under, so that amber is going to fly right under there. It's going to ignite those leaves, and what's above it is wood, and all of a sudden you've got your home in flames. And exactly. you know we don't have a lot of time to get out in some cases. And some cases it's also if you're prepared and you're you're ready. We encourage you to, to do what you can to share with your neighbors. You know, a lot of times it's talking with your neighbors. Hey, are you firewise? Are are you? Do you understand wh where you communicate with? And I think that's just being neighborly and being part of the people that we are here in the White Mountain area in Navajo County. So, Agreed. you know, I do really appreciate you guys today of sharing this with us, and hopefully, we can do our part. We hope we never have to have another fire in here, but if we do, like you say, it's a matter of when it does happen. We have had at least three major ones that have caused concern and, and a lot of damage. And so we just hope that we'll remain safe, we'll be safe, and we'll take added measures to protect and be prepared. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate it, Katrina. Thank Thanks you for, for all you do me. for Navajo County and Chief. Stay safe out there, okay? And Thank all the are. best here on this fire that you're fighting in the preparation for the upcoming season. But Thank even you, though we're blessed, it also creates a little bit of more undergrowth happening and, <laughs> and those things with us. But thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you thank for you. having us. Thanks for joining us on Navajo County Connection, and we'll see you next month.